Colombia. A place filled with beautiful destinations everywhere you go. However, few compared to the Pacific Coast. This is where the jungle meets the sea. A place where waterfalls crash into ocean waves, where thermal pools lie hidden in the dense jungle. Where tiny villages, although remote, are filled with life. Where residents live at peace with nature. A place where whales, dolphins, turtles are as curious as you are. This beautiful destination is a must stop on your trip to Colombia. Buenos dias amigos y familia. So today I'm going to be uploading a very important video. First, because it's my first video ever. And second, because it will be a video exploring the regions of El Choco. So basically when I told my family that I wanted to go to El Choco, I got lots of negative reactions because El Choco up to recently was a red zone. What you'll notice in Colombia if you do end up backpacking there is that there is a lot of Colombians that travel in their own country. Um, because there's just so much to do, we've got beaches, we've got mountains, we have it all. Um, but you won't find a lot of Colombians outside of like people from Medellin going to El Chocó. It is one of the poorest regions in Colombia. Um, but you know, if you're backpacking, that's pretty good because it's about as off the beaten path as you can get. El Chocó was also a red zone up to recently because of conflict between las guerrillas paramilitares, which continued through the 90s and the early 2000s. But in the last years, Security has gone way up. So from Bahia Solano, once you get to the airport, you get your things, you'll notice that the airport is tiny and that they have chickens running around everywhere. So then you can either take un moto taxi or un tutu to take you all the way to the hostel, which is in El Valle. El Valle está a 40 minutes from Bahia Solano and it costs 15 mil por persona, so about five dollars to get there. So El Choco lacks infrastructure, therefore it lacks roads, therefore we ended up getting stuck for a bit. But eventually we were able to get to the hostel. We decided that we didn't want to waste the day, so the first thing we did was leave our bags and head to the first tour. Booking through the hostel is kind of expensive, so we just kind of talked to one of the maids and she told us that her husband could show us around for half the price. So we immediately headed into town and from there, headed on a much more rural looking Venice tour. The Tundo River basically goes deeper into the Choco rainforest. You can see many birds, much more flora, fauna. Through the hostel, it would cost about 50 mil por persona. So we thought that was too expensive. Um, for us, it ended up costing 15 mil por persona, so about $5. This river is where people come to hang out after school, where mothers do their laundry, where fishermen stay to find their next meal. Before we head out on our next excursion, I'm just going to show you guys around the hostel. The humpback turtle is on the farthest edge of Playa Almejal. It is right on the beach beside a pair of waterfalls. If you decide to get a private room, it's 60 mil la noche, about 20 bucks per night. Staying in a shared room with a bed is 30 mil la noche, or about 13 bucks a night. And staying in a hammock is 25 la noche, about 8 bucks. Accommodations all have shared bathrooms and one open air kitchen. I get that the prices can be a little hefty, but I really like this place because they push sustainability. The garden fertilizer is all produced in the kitchen's compost. Also, breakfast is free. So today we will be going to first Las Cascadas del Amor and then La Piscina. Um, 
which is just about two hours in Caminata. Please get a tour guide. You cannot do these excursions without a tour guide. You will get lost. There is too much flora, too much fauna. La marea sube y baja como no hubiera mañana. Um, even the jungle, even the little side parts that are supposed to be like for the tour are like not there. So you will get lost, your tour guide will get lost, but at least you'll know what to do when you get lost. So, um, the walk is about two hours, but you basically get to Unas Cascadas del Amor. Deserted. There was no one there. It was amazing. They're um, deep enough you can jump. Uh, we're along the beach. We're also, I've seen no tourist, nothing. It's pretty, pretty damn great. And right now I'm eating some coco. That's what we went up and took out of the tree. So, right now. We're going to another pair of um, waterfalls, so it's about to be great. So then after visiting the second pair of waterfalls, having a great time, we head back. And I want you to notice how much more rocks you see, how the caves are empty. It's just part of how much La Marea Sube Baja, so how much more of the land is actually submerged during the morning and less throughout. Beware, later in the day I tried to surf. It was a disaster. In the hostel, they'll actually try to charge you for the boards, but you could just sweet your talk your way into having them for free for about like two to three hours. And as you can notice, these sunsets never get boring. So this is the end of our first two days in Bahia Solano. In total, we stayed there six. So in our next video, we will be exploring the next four days, four stops, more termales, more waterfalls, more surfing. So I hope you'll join us to that adventure. So if you liked the video, I hope that you will give it a big thumbs up and join us next time on El Traveling Cuerpo to Bahia Solano part two. Eventually, I hope to be uploading El Tairona, Portugal. I just want to show you guys everything I can do on a budget because I know being a broke college student it's pretty hard but you can still travel just cheaply <laughs>